In this video we will look on 25 most popular programming terms that you must use when you are talking to other developers, especially in the interview. And the sponsor of this video is Filestack. If you want to make possible image uploading on your website, you typically need front and backend, storing files on your server or uploading them to CDN. And this is really a lot of work. If you want to make possible uploading files directly from Dropbox, Facebook or Instagram, then it is even more work. Filestack solves all these problems at once, and just in several lines of code you can get all these things out of the box. You can use Filestack with plain JavaScript or with any popular framework like React or Angular. Additionally, you can transform images on the fly, upload files to your own CDN and much, much more. If you want to check Filestack, there is a link in the description box below. And now let's jump into the video. And you might ask, why do you need that at all? I can write code. But it's not only about writing code, it's about telling something regarding programming to other people. And it is especially important in the interviews, where it is mandatory to use the correct terminology. If you use wrong terms when you are describing something, you won't be treated as an advanced developer. This is why you must understand and use these terms. So what is argument? Argument is a word that you want to use when you want to provide some data inside the function. For example, here we have a function foo and we are providing inside as an argument bar. So bar in this case is an argument. And also it is allowed to call it not an argument, but a parameter or params of the function. It is also completely valid. What is operator? Typically we are writing code like this, for example we have some variable c and we want to write here a plus b. In this case this plus is exactly an operator. And there are different operators inside all languages. Typically we have the math operators like add, subtract, multiply and divide. But we also have an operators of comparison. For example, we can also write here a less than b, or a bigger than b, or bigger or equals b, or equals b. These are all operators of comparison. But it is not all, you also have assignment operators. Let's say that we have here a variable a and it is assigned to 1. Now here we can write a plus equal 1. In this case we want just to add 1 to our a. And typically we can write here a equals a plus 1 and it will be exactly the same, but here we used what is called assignment operator. And here we have four of them, we have plus equal, we also have minus equal, we also have multiply and divide. These are all assignment operators and actually we are not using them that often and typically you will see in the code just addition operator with plus equal. And what is statement? Statement inside any language is just a single line of your code. For example, if we are writing here const c equals a plus b, it is a statement. This is just a single line. But here I can also write console log, for example, foo, and it is also a statement, which actually means a single line of any code is a statement. So now we know what is statement, but what is declaration? Actually declaration is a statement where we declare something. This is why here const c equals 1, this is declaration and assignment. And if we just write here const c, then this is a declaration, and fully it will be a declaration statement. So what is declaration? This is just a process to define variables so we can use it later, and our language knows that these variables were defined. The next thing that we have is expression, and people are typically mixing expressions and statements. And as we already know, statement is any line of the code, it can be really whatever. But what is an expression? Actually, expression is a statement, but it must return a value. This is why here, as you can see, const a equals, for example, b plus c, this is a statement and this is an expression. So the main rule here that expression will produce a value. But actually, typically programmers are using words expressions and statements when they just want to say that there is a single line and it does something. But what are conditional statements? We already know what is statement. Conditional means that we are writing statement with some condition. And typically, for example, in JavaScript, we will use for this if operator. For example, if is active, then we are doing our code. So this is exactly conditional statement, because here we are writing a condition. And it is not the only possibility to write a condition, we can also use for this ternary operator. 
For example, we have C and we are checking here is active, when yes then we are assigning here active, in other case we are assigning here inactive. And actually this is also our conditional statement, because we are using here a condition. The next question is what is IDE, and actually this is integration development environment. And the most popular example of it will be intelligence idea, which is a paid IDE to develop code in different languages. So the main question is here what is the difference between just an editor, for example VS Code, and IDE, for example intelligence idea. And actually the difference nowadays are super small. Typically we define editors like just a place to write code, but the IDE a place where we can not only write code, we have advanced tools like autocomplete checking our code, writing compilers and much much more. But nowadays a lot of editors, for example VS Code, also have inside them all these tools built in. So nowadays editors and IDEs are super similar sometimes. The next two questions are what is compiler and what is transpiler, because actually we are interested in the difference between them. And typically when we are using word compiler, we means that we are compiling our program in another language. And typically we want to say here that this code will be readable by computer. As you can see here I have GCC which is a compiler for example for C++, and it compiles our applications in binary executable code. But on the other hand, when we are talking about transpilers, it is different. Yes, we also do something with our source code, and we convert it to other language. But typically we are converting our code in another human-readable language, not computer-readable language. For example, here the most popular transpiler for JavaScript will be TypeScript. And actually we are writing our TypeScript code, and then we transpile it to JavaScript, so we can run it in the browser. Which actually means the main difference between compiler and transpiler, that with compiler we are transpiling something for the computer readable code, but transpiler transpiles it to the same human readable code. The next two terms that you must understand are binary numbers and bits. And actually if you don't know binary numbers are numbers that are just created with 1 and 0, and this is the numbers how computers are reading them. So actually all our information that we are writing, computers read as a binary system. And here you can see the typical example of the binary number. As you can see here we have just 1 or 0 and no other numbers. But what is bit? Bit is just a single letter inside a binary number. In this case the first one here is a bit. The next question is really a tricky one, because this is the question what is API, and this is the term that you can hear really a lot. And typically all developers when they are talking about API, they are referring just to API that you are getting from the backend. For example, as you can see here I opened the website, and we are making here API requests to conduit production ready io slash API. And here we are getting back some articles. And typically when programmers are talking about API, they are talking about backend API, which delivers some data to the client. And actually this is totally correct. But API is not just this. API is really any programming interface that you can imagine. For example, here we can write that we have foo service, and this is some service that we installed or created, and actually this service also has an API. It can be public API, private API, but any methods that we are calling here or any properties is an API, because we created this service and we defined, okay, this foo service has a bar method. So actually this bar method is exactly the part of our API that we defined for our service. So actually API is a way to define your functions, your classes, your applications, everything which exists inside programming. But what is CLI or command line interface? And actually this is just a user interface which is based on text. And typically when we are referring to CLI tools, we are referring to the tools that we will use inside terminal. And here you can see the example of the terminal, and I can write some commands. And this is exactly the example what is CLI. Another popular term is CI or continuous integration. And actually here we are referring to some tool, where inside different developers can merge their code, and different commands or programs will check this code, or run tests for example, or deploy this code. Which actually means this is a set of tools, which is used to do some continuous things with your code. 
And typically big companies like GitLab or GitHub have inside CI, which actually means you can configure what will happen with your project every single time when you create, for example, pull request, make a commit or push your changes. The next two terms are library and framework. And actually when we're using word library, we're talking about something where we have just a set of functions that we can use. And actually it is super misleading because when we're jumping, for example, inside React website, we see here that it is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. But realistically, React is a framework because actually it is super similar to Angular and Vue and they are also frameworks. But when we're jumping to Lodash, for example, this is really a JavaScript utility library where we have lots of different methods that we can use. Because actually inside library we don't have anything except of some functions. And here inside Lodash this is a great example of the library. We just have a bunch of functions and we can use them. This is a library. But when we're getting some architecture like for example inside React or inside Angular when you have some patterns and you have some skeleton which you can use to build your application this is not a library anymore. This is a framework. Another question is what is runtime? And actually, as you can understand from the name, this is the time while your program is running. And it is super understandable in another languages. You simply execute some file and this file starts running and at the some point it finishes. But for example, in JavaScript world, we are using this term differently. When we are using word runtime, we are referring to JavaScript, which is being run inside browser. And typically the whole website is running inside browser with JavaScript every single time when we load the page, which actually means every single time when we reload the page, we have a runtime because JavaScript executes everything, parses our file, and this is the runtime of JavaScript. Now we have three different terms that you must master, because actually in every single interview people are mixing these words, and then you understand that these people are just beginners. And these words are classes, instances and methods. So when we are talking about classes, we are using class keyword. For example, here we have our class user, and this is the class, this is how we are defining it. And after this we have a user. And here we are using word new and we are creating an instance of the class. And it is super important to not refer to this user like to the class, because it is not a class, it is an instance of the class. This is a class. And actually all functions inside the class are methods. And people typically are using word function because they are creating a function inside class. This is actually totally fine. But the more correct term is to use word method. For example, inside user we have get first name and this is the method. You can of course say that this is also a function, but inside class it is a method. User is our instance and here we're calling user get first name. This is the method of our class. The next important term is iteration and actually iteration is just a single run through something inside your code. Typically you will hear word iteration in several ways. For example, when we are talking about loops, if we have here an array, 1 to 3, and here we are using for each loop, and here inside we are doing something, then every single time when we are making a loop is called iteration. But it is not the only usage. For example, when we are talking about frameworks, and we are talking that framework need to re-render the whole tree of our components, it is also called iteration because this is just a single pass through something inside programming. The next term is keywords, and actually keywords is all words which are reserved inside your language. For example, if we are talking about JavaScript, then words like if, maybe while, for, else, they all are reserved. You can't really define such variables because these are reserved keywords. Another important term is middleware, and actually you can guess it from the name, it is something which is staying in the middle. For example, as you can see here on the picture, we have our client on the left, then we have a middleware, and we have our cloud on the right, which actually means our client communicates with our cloud. But there is a middleware between them, which actually means client sends a request to our cloud, and actually our middleware might check this request and do something with it. For example, we can check if the user is correctly authenticated. And if not, then we should not hit cloud at all. 
In this case, we can simply say user is not logged in. And if everything is fine and middleware did what was needed, then the request simply goes to our cloud directly. Which actually means middleware is simply some code which is written between two different places. It can be, for example, backend and frontend, it can be different functions inside your own application. And the last term in our list is wrapper. And actually, what is wrapper? This is something which wraps our code. And the main idea is that we have some code that we want to wrap, so nobody sees this code inside. And this is super useful when we are talking about some libraries or some functions or services that you want to hide. Which actually means you are using some library, but you don't really want to use functions from this library inside your application. Because actually every single time when you want to swap this library to another library, you must change all these functions in the whole application. If you wrap this library with your own implementation, then you don't have any problem of swapping this library to another one. Because you simply need to change it in just a single place, and not in the whole application. Which actually means we are using wrappers when we need to hide some logic inside our code. And actually, if you can't decide where to focus, on frontend or backend or maybe on the full stack, I have the full video regarding it. So don't forget to check it out, I will link it here on the top.